Hello everybody and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. In the previous episode we had some really, uh, just a really troubling start. Urku and Trell both filled with stress on, a, on their first adventure immediately, which was really surprising. We really didn't get too far with him guys, but yeah, it was it was, it was was shocking, but we, we, we managed to pull out and them guys have been healing up, they've been repenting and um, drinking their sorrows away so hopefully they're feeling a bit better and um, Rune and his group went out on their first little adventure we'll be jumping right back in and going over the new recruits to the town and introducing their characters and their backstories okay so here we are in the cursed estate the first thing we're going to go through is just we've got our characters here we actually brought in a duchess a priest and a leper but first of all our harlot red has written a diary entry this one is by friendly chef it seems i first experienced the darkest dungeon i'll admit it was harder than i expected not that, that big oaf up front helped with anything but that girl with a falcon sabrina i think her name was was quite good with a bow perhaps i'll ask her to teach me how to use one and that's just uh, a little entry there into her diary about her first experiences into the darkest dungeon she went in of course with uh, sabrina the falconer who was she was specifically speaking about rune still still pretty high stress we're gonna have to go and do some stuff to clear him out but he has he has some good quirks though really doesn't he uh he, he's got some good stuff well we'll t take that off him for now uh just because we're gonna be, maybe use it on another character but before we do anything here we have the ability to upgrade our blacksmith and if we do a little bit of trading here not even that much if we do a little bit of trading we can get one piece here and upgrade our armorsmith as well now we don't exactly have the money to start upgrading everyone here there and everywhere yet but as you can see we can drag in renault and for 1500 get both of his things upgraded so we'll um I think the main ones we're going to want to upgrade, the main ones that have been really shining so far, we're going to want to give Renault his upgrades, Clint his upgrades, because he's just been just fantastic so far, um, and I think we'll also go with Aurora, and then I think we'll, actually we'll go with Dismas as well. Let's get all of those upgraded. Then we've got just enough to, for our next adventure. If we want to, we can sell trinkets. It's not advised yet. Although, I think I think we will we will sell this one because I don't even have that character yet and I'm, I'm fine with not having one of those for now. But yeah, we'll, we'll try to avoid selling trinkets when possible. But either way, let's get into our character introductions here. The first one we have is Victoria, our Duchess. And this backstory is by Softroll. Before the attack that turned the court into crimson, Victoria lived a very lavish and happy life in the royal family. When it was her 20th birthday, bards sung and jesters danced for the family amusement. Laughter could be heard from the vast balconies, but on that fateful day there was an ambush. Horrid nightmare creatures crawled through the walls of the court. Instead of devouring who they attacked, they attached their stingers into them, creating some sort of monster. She saw her entire family transformed. As soon as she saw those creatures' bare teeth, she knew she had to escape, but n not before one of them latched onto her, but she did survive. She grabbed a claymore from their barracks and escaped to the nearby woods, never to be seen again. Now she joins the embark towards the now appropriately named Crimson Court to tear back what is hers. That is a brilliant backstory. Mixes in the Crimson Court DLC. It's not actually something I have installed, but... But I really appreciate the uh, extra backstory, and I do want to look into getting DLCs as we play. I've heard that a lot of them you want to be playing late game anyways, so we're going to be leaving those for a little later on anyways. But yes, they, they do mix quite nicely into um, into the backstories of everyone else, so I, I, I very much appreciate that. Next, we have our Exorcist, Aaron, and this one is by Wild Seabass. The St. Alsem Catholic Church was known for two things, its proximity to the darkest dungeon and a man known as Aaron. Aaron was born into a family with a troubled father and a timid mother. His father was known in the town for being more aggressive, m more aggressive than a raging alcoholic, attacking his family and leaving them with rather deep scars. Aaron was always fond of the Catholic Church, but he was very different from your typical religious member. Aaron's childhood made him believe that he was chosen by God to become an exorcist, a man who drives out demons and supernatural. His first patient was his father. 
Although his father cursed at him and tried to attack him, Aaron stood his ground and performed the exorcism. His father broke down and apparently was rid of the demon. Aaron would become the local phenomenon and many bring their troubled ones and he had some success and some failures. Another great backstory there, the exorcist, such a cool character, he's going to be a bit of a healer, he's going to be doing some damage, he's going to be uh, like clearing corpses, things like that, he's got some really, really interesting skills, do, doing a bit of stress healing and a bit of normal healing, that's a really good backstory for him. Thank you for that, Seabass, and we actually have another one here by Seabass, this is a leper Hammurabi by Seabass again. Um, although the disease was said to be impossible to contract again, Hammurabi was unfortunate enough to gain the Babylonian curse. Ridiculed by many, Hammurabi retrieved his heirloom sword, the Reaper, and exiled himself. Known for his brute strength, Hammurabi obliterates anything that threatens to harm him, either physically or emotionally. However, leprosy didn't forget his eyes, so not all of his finishes land. In search of a haven of misfits, Hammurabi found the darkest dungeon. Now, a very simple one, but it makes so much sense. I love it. It's really, really good. Sadly, we do have Malnourished here for Hammurabi. I mean, it kind of makes sense for his character, but yeah, we're going to be losing 20% of our maximum HP off the bat right here as Hammurabi, which is not good at all. We are going to want to be getting rid of that as soon as possible. We have unlocked our sanatorium here, so it is going to be a good idea to start getting rid of some of those as we progress. But I think first off, we can we can decide where we want to be going here, where we want to be heading off into. Let's uh, let's have a little look at embarking in, seeing what we can get done. So we've been to the Weald, we've been to the ruins. The Warrens, however, would be a level two adventure, so it's not advised that we go there again just yet. Um, I think I think it's going to be another one into the ruins here. So let's get ourselves a decent group going. Um, we can take a few of these guys off out of the front line and i think so if we, if we take a look at who we've got here so victoria um very nice extra speed and dodge on the first round she's gonna get extra stress um if above 50 i'm guessing that means 50 light uh and she's gonna receive less healing while bleeding but she does have some good amount of uh, damage against bleed um, in fact, she's got a lot of extra damage against bleed, so maybe she's not going to be the best, um, the best person to go for for the um, for the ruins. Of course, as you guys know, bleed damage isn't as effective. But here we have um, Aaron. We could take him in. Let's have a little look at Aaron. So he's going to get extra damage against marked, but less damage against not marked. So he's going to want to be paired up with someone that can mark a lot. He can mark himself, um, which is nice. And it even buff himself up to gain extra damage versus marked. Uh, which is a pretty good one. We've got the ability to de-stress and clear corpses, which is nice. We can clear horror, clear stun, clear marked. But it will also debuff himself. And then our main attack is going to be this here. But I think if we keep him in the back line and just keep him doing these two, of course, at some point we need to maybe get some of these skills so he has a little bit more range damage. But I think if we keep this guy in the back line, Aaron's going to be a really, really nice little extra bit of healing there. And then, although our Leopard does have less maximum HP from um, from Malnourished here, um, that is going to be okay because we are going to be consuming less food. So we'll put him on the front line, give him the chance from Hammurabi there, give him the chance to show what he's got. And then I think, I think we'll go with our Arbalist again here. Um... Aurora just she's still got a little bit of stress on her uh, But she is a little bit uh, stronger than the rest and I think she's gonna be very very valuable And I think we'll actually take care uh, Victoria at Duchess as well anyways because even without Even without the ability to, to, to bleed enemies. She has some really really nice abilities um, So we can we can use those so we have to be careful with this one because this one is gonna move her forward one uh, but I think, I think we're going to deal, deal a decent amount of damage with her. So our healing isn't the best here, but this is this is only a short run. Uh, we'll make sure to take as much as we need in terms of food. So we'll take a little bit more than we need for food. Take two of those, two of those, two of those, two of those, two of those. Um, and one of those. And then torches, we will take 12. Okay, spent quite a lot on that, uh, that there, but we do have um, enough now to embark without too much fear so next up here we have another diary entry from friendly shep and this one is for our burgatier room 
I've known rumors of the beast that killed my comrade lurks within this curse to sit. I vow to strike down any and all foes who stand in the way of me and my quest to eliminate that foul thing from this land. Now he is talking about the uh, the swine king, I believe he's called. So he's we're going to have to look out for him and make sure, familiar. make sure we take oh, Rune on that boy. adventure. He is going to want to slay that beast with his own hands. He is going to want to lay him to rest. So we've got to explore 90% of rooms. Probably best that we go this way first. See what we can get done. I'm a little worried here for um for our healing. Um, we've not exactly got the strongest group for healing. Oh, trap dodge, beautiful, beautiful. We've not exactly got the best uh, healing here, and we of course all start off with a little bit of stress here, which isn't great. But I think we've got a decent amount of stress healing with clearing bodies from from our guy here that we should be able to we should be able to get uh, a decent amount going there because. Basically, what we're going to be doing is getting three corpses lined up and taking them all out at once. So, we got a surprise, which is beautiful. We can start going for the uh, the back line here. So, we'll quickly cover Victoria's abilities here. So, first off, we have pretty much a normal attack that just does extra to bleeding. So, we can use that as normal, although it does have a low accuracy base. Then, we have a Crimson Lance. Again, fitting into our backstory. That is going to push us forward, but it's going to deal extra damage. Extra damage to bleeding, and then it's going to be less, uh, less damage if we're in certain positions. Meaning, we want to be in position 1 for this. Position 2, it, it does... Virtually no damage, as you can see, minus 75%. So that's not great. Then we also have the um, Quebble of the Rel 1. Uh, and this is going to move us back. Of the Rabble, sorry. Uh, this is going to move us back. This is going to allow us to stun. Uh, again, it's going to have minus stun chance if we're in position 2, which we are. And it is going to debuff the target as well. And then we have the ability to activate Repost on ourselves. I think that's what we're going to do for, to start with here. Activate Repost. Um, and we'll get Aegis there as well, which is really nice. Uh, so this guy isn't actually going to be able to do too much right now, but let's um, let's add another another block to you. That means we've got two blocks on her, and it's going to buff her speed a little bit. Although doing extra damage to Mark isn't going to help too much, I think that's still going to be quite nice. And now, of course, of course, Hammerbury here is pretty inaccurate, but he can self-stress heal and self-heal. We'll just go for a strike, and there you go. The damage he does is just... Insane. Um, right. We do have the ability to mark target here, actually, which is quite nice. So, I think... I think we'll actually go for... I don't know, actually. I'm, I'm a bit confused on what to do here. Let's go for reduced accuracy and reduced crit on the back two here. That's going to be a nice debuff. Hopefully, we can get a dodge. We block one of those Aegis and even... Got a re-strike. There you go. That's beautiful. Getting the repost here. They're all going for... Our Duchess, because she's marked. That's beautiful with her repost there. She is getting a lot done for us. So now if we try and take out you. Now if we clear bodies. We should be able to get a decent amount of stress healing on a few people here. Now it is only a chance for a stress heal. As you see here. It's only 73% chance. But still a nice amount of stress healing. And I do believe it's going to be, yeah, plus 50% stress healed per corpse. Which is really, really nice. And we'll just go for a normal strike and finish you off. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice first bit of combat there. Absolutely no trouble at all for this uh, this group. Victoria really knows her way around that, uh, around that blade. Right. So here we've got our first little cupboard to open. Nice bit of money there. Want we'll to be keeping our light topped up. Heading to here. Now, we don't have to head to this last one here because we, we can explore around. Although, I actually think we should because we're missing out on two rooms up this way. We probably should. Right. Take that. We've got to be prepared for the hallway uh, damage we could be taking from various bits of combat. I did take a few extra torches here so we can keep ourselves torched up fully the entire time. But on our way back through hallways, we really shouldn't have any problem with, with taking on too much light or stress issues because when you back travel like this it doesn't take down anywhere near as much light which is really nice so then we'll go back up to the starting room then down all the way along this path and that should be absolutely fine for us move up through here but this is going to be a, a fairly good adventure for these guys i think it's taking a little bit of time but i think these guys are, are really well prepared to, to work alongside each other and it's going to hopefully form a nice bond between these characters. I mean, we've already been on one adventure with Aurora here. She kind of knows her way around this place a little bit more than the rest of them. Maybe she's um, she's helping guide the way and show them show them how to uh, how to, to 
come across some of the undead that's here. Now, this is one of the new enemies. These guys need to be taken out immediately. Like, there is... There, you just have to. So, I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to use this, even though it deals so much less damage, just to try and get some extra damage on this guy. Um, we'll activate a mark on you. Because we get that. But yeah, he's going to start buffing things for extra damage. We just want to take him out as quick as possible. There you go. He can... All of the new enemies, you, they are priority targets. You have to take them out immediately. We'll try and take you out. Nice slash there. Thank God we're not getting any misses here. We are going to take some stress here. Just a little bit. But he can deal with it. During his days of exorcisms, he has come across his fair share. His fair share of um, stress. Right, let's activate Repost. Repost there is super useful. We'll take out our stress dealer. Try and finish him off. Unfortunately, we can't quite reach him here. But we are going to block and repost there, which is really nice. And unfortunately, no. Aaron taking on the full brunt of all of the stress here, which is really not what we want. And Aurora getting a miss as well. Does not help. Does not help. Right. We're just going to activate another block here because I want to I get some bodies destroyed for... Um, we're going to do some stress healing here. Just for the sake of getting rid of corpses here. Getting a little bit of stress healing on everyone. Now, she's going to get another move. Please don't go for Aaron. Oh, my God. Aaron is um, is in a bad way. And another miss on Victoria there really doesn't help at all. Okay. So, we're, we're not in a great spot right now. Please hit. Thank you, Aurora. Thank you. Okay, so maybe that's not a great a great tactic coming up further here. I think we'll reassign. We'll make sure to touch this with you. I believe this will give us a buff of extra dodge and protection until camp. That's lovely. Yeah, so Aaron may need to... Um, we'll actually give him a little bit of food, do you know? Just two. Not not, not anything crazy. But we, um, we, we might need to bring him in to do some prayer and, and heal himself up because he is not... In good shape for stress here. And here's another stress dealer that we have to get rid of straight away. And yet again, Aaron is taking the full brunt of stress damage. Which is really, really just terrible for us. Just terrible. So let's get rid of her. She's almost done. Focus all of our attacks. Unfortunately, our Buri is just... He's, he's not very accurate. She has died. But as you can see, there's horror on all of us. His resolve is tested. He's selfish. Damn. Damn, already straight away. But as you can see, we're taking six stress for all these. But we can remove horror with our healing. So we want to be doing that on as many people as possible. We really want to get that on Aurora as well. Um, let's just go for our stress dealer and try and get rid of it. Aurora, no. You did so well before. What's happened to your accuracy here? She's really dropping the ball here. Okay. We need to be um, getting rid of the horror. Does this clear bleed as well? It doesn't clear bleed, so let's just use it on her. He's gonna, he's gonna be in a, in a bad, bad way. Um, let's try and take you out. We've got good damage here, but the stress we're dealing right now, they're taking right now, is is not good at all. Um, we're gonna have to go for just a, a normal attack here. Having Aurora in the back line there doesn't actually hurt us too much though, which is nice. And unfortunately, we can't do anything here. Um, we can mark a target, so let's do that. And that is going to help with Aurora's damage there, so that's very nice. Okay, another hit on... Okay. They really don't like Aaron. I I, I mean, he is an exorcist, so it, it, it makes sense, but I, I they really don't like him. And there you go, another dodge. This is just... It's just difficult, isn't it? This is just difficult, isn't it? <laughs> So, unfortunately, from this position, we can't use Ashes to Ashes, which is such a big pain because it's the only skill I want to use with him right now. Um, stop trying to pull my characters. God damn it. Bury there. He can't do anything from spot one. Like, nothing at all. Set up a repost. Finish you off the stress dealers. Wow, they've just been absolutely brutal for us recently. Let's get rid of these bodies and try and get some stress healing on everyone. Okay. Okay, we need to get some healing going here. A crit six heal is lovely. Um, I'm actually going to heal up with you as well. I have a repost. Watch out! 
I'm absolutely loving Victoria's repost ability. It's been really, really, really vital in this. It's been super, super useful. We do have a diary here. The wound is starting to fester. The flesh around it is grey, flaking and rigid, almost scar-like. As I write this, my breathing has t uh, taken on a hollow timber, and it is more laboured. My compatriots are laughing and telling me not to worry. It's just the salt mist in the air that prevents the uh, that pervades these caverns. Well, that sounds a bit dark. Right. Let's open this up. Yeah, we are we are in a pretty pretty bad way now. I mean, everyone else is actually doing relatively well uh, considering the circumstance. But Aaron here, I don't know. If, he's just not cut out for this, is he? He's just not cut out for this. He is he has taken on some crazy stuff. So he's got minus 10% max HP. He's got minus 10% damage. He's got uh, minus 5 accuracy. He's got lots of less resists all because of his affliction here. He's going to definitely, definitely need to go and pray as soon as we get back. And of course, everyone's taking major extra stress because of this. Oopsie. Should have used this. Get some herbs on there. Good, good, good. We can actually get rid of that now. Uh, free, up, free up an extra slot. We've only got two more rooms to go. We've only got two more rooms to do. One more hallway battle could happen right here. Uh, right, so let's always set up repose first with her. We get a block, a mark, and a repose. It basically saves everyone else's butts. So I'm going to take that. Let's heal you up a bit. He's still got selfish. He's, we're not going to be able to get rid of that unless we lower his stress to zero this, this time around. But that's not going to happen, is it? Um... Let's just go for some extra strikes here with Aurora. She'll be able to take some stuff. Q, there you go. A kill with Q, which is surprising, but lovely. But having having this repose set up on her is going to be absolutely fabulous. Um, Victoria is just a monster. And we actually got ourselves um, the Bloodied Club, which is going to increase our damage by a decent amount. And I think, even though it's extra crits received, I'm just going to throw that on this guy straight away. Getting extra damage on him is just... It's ridiculously important because the more one-shot kills we can get on these weaker enemies, the better everyone's going to become. Damn it. Took a little bit of extra stress. Aaron, you're meant to be a holy man. Can you stop stressing everyone out, please? But there you go. We managed to get through our first adventure here. A little bit worse for wear, but every honestly, everyone did okay. It was only really Aaron that took on the full, the full brunt of it all. And he is, uh, he is taking on... Light sensitive, less damage above 75 torch, and extra sun resist if he's below 50% HP. Not bad. He's definitely getting thrown straight into the, um, we got a monk here. I won't take the monk yet, though. I want to see what all the characters are first. I don't want to just take all of the town events because they're always modded characters. Peace through meditation, that's fine. We're going to want to be praying to a higher power here. Let's put him in there. Show me the pain. He is, uh, he is all the way in there. Everyone's got a little bit of stress. I think... Oh, my God. I'd love to buy that, but that's a little bit expensive. That's actually a really, really good one, that, if you don't want to dodge. like that a lot. Um, yeah, so maybe we'll also put um, Ryan Hawthorne in as well. He's looking a little worse for wear. Urku is feeling a lot better, although he does still have a decent amount of stress at 47, so... Maybe we'll we'll spend some extra money and make sure everyone's everyone's feeling good. So let's go. Oku can go for another drink. And Ryan can he only go He can only drink. Okay. You can you can go to the brothel then and you can drink. It's quite a lot of money, but you gotta remember, we're trying to make sure these guys are all okay. Now let's see who we're bringing in this time around. We have the Plague Doctor, the Idrant Cook. And a trap maker. Very, very nice. So they're going to be our next three. We will introduce those later on in the episode. We'll have a look what else we've got here. We've got a survivalist. We can level that up. I'm, I'm going to be fine for not doing that for now. We haven't been camping yet. But the thing that we've got to be wary of here is we're, we're not in a good way for healing. Our Idrunt Cook is going to be good for healing, though. Idrunt Cook is very, very nice for healing. Uh, if you don't know what this is, basically she has this ability here, which lets her change between combat and cooking, and she can um, and give everyone restoration. And then she also has her choice um, piece, which is going to allow her to mark targets, um, but it's going to allow us to, to buff her healing abilities. Then she also has the occult condiment, which is going to buff her healings received for targets. 
Um, it's gonna, in combat mode, heal for a bit of restoration and steal rest restoration from others. And it's also gonna be um, increasing blight skill chance on the main course. And then we also have entreatment, which is gonna be a flat out heal mixed with a bit of restoration. Buffing maximum HP and buffing healing as well. Very, very nice. We're going to be using her quite a lot. She's quite a difficult character to use, actually. Um, she's, she can be a little difficult, but she's going to be fun. Uh, we have our Trap Maker, which is exactly as it sounds. We get ourselves a blunderbuss that he's got on his back here. He comes with an Iron Maiden as well, which is pretty awesome. Uh, he also comes with Armor Breaker. Um, which is quite nice, and escape door, which allows him to run away. Unfortunately, we're actually missing out on the, the main three of his trap abilities, which is a little upsetting. Um, but here we've got the ability to bleed and stun, although it does apply a block, so you've got to be careful using that. Uh, I, I'm, liking, I'm liking this, though. Armor piercing... Um, and it reduces their protection and marks the target. That's going to be very, very nice when paired with certain characters there. And, of course, 20 accuracy vest marked with his blunderbuss there. It's going to knock him back, the Well, knock them back, sorry. So that could be a bit of a problem. But most of the time, knockback's pretty good. And then, of course, everyone knows Plague Doctor's very, very useful. We're going to be able to deal Blight. We can stun in the back line there. Um, we've got ourselves the ability to buff our targets. And we've got the Disorientating Blast, which is going to be um, our Shuffle and Stun, and even Clear Corpse as well. So very nice on that end. We are still in desperate, desperate need of a Vestal or proper healer. Now, I did say there was um, there was a Monk, which I can't remember how to get to now. Is it this one here? We could take on a Monk, but even he doesn't have particularly good healing abilities. I think these three are going to be our three for now. But yes, we'll go into those backstories in a moment. First up, we have Linus, our trap maker. Um, this is a backstory written by Jurassic Ian from my Discord. Thank you very much. Um, Linus, originally a toy maker. Linus was one of the most efficient and effective at making toys, some of them being ahead of his time, but suddenly a war started. Linus, wanting to help his nation, created his first trap. Similar to the, similar to the spike traps you see dotted around the ruins, this was a point of no return. Forced to make traps of all kinds, Linus was at his wit's end. He knew he caused death, but he did not know how many deaths he'd caused. Before his mind could break completely, the king Linus worked for was assassinated by his own court jester of all people. Out of a job, the ancestor then hired him to lay traps all around what would become the ruins, as well as the manor and even seemingly random places around the hamlet. Eventually, he was kicked out of this job. From there, he ended up working for the Brigates, where he learned to use his blunderbuss. However, he did decide to stop working for them. Whenever, uh, whatever was below the manor had changed, um, changed him immensely, and he would rather find out what occurred down below than continue his work with them. Using his knowledge of traps in the estate, he joined the offence against the darkest dungeon. Now, this is a brilliant backstory for Linus here. Uh, I really like the idea of having him tie into the actual traps that exist in the in the dungeon already. He's going to be a very, very interesting one for us to play around with. I think he's going to be quite uh, quite effective for us to, to have a little play around with. Next up, we have our itinerant cook, Maggie, and this backstory is by Seabass. Yes, she prefers cooking over fighting, but don't let her scrumptious plates distract you from her quite impressive ability of fighting. Maggie travelled the world in order to perfect every cuisine, from the wonderful chevetier in Peru to the lip-smacking chow mein in China. Maggie went from your typical grandma to chef extraordinaire. However, when travelling to many of the poorer sectors of the globe, many criminals and bandits saw Maggie as an easy target, but her fighting, fil her fighting skills were so refined that she was able to fend off all ambushes. She cooked for the world's elite, such as the Queen of France and the world's poorest, such as French commoners, in Paris. When she heard of all the legends, misfits, and residents of the Darkest Dungeon, she knew her expertise, her expertise had found the ultimate task. Now, that is a really good backstory for her. As you can see, she is uh, she is quite overcumbered here. Uh, she is going to be, hopefully, hopefully helping out our, our ragtag crew to bring in some much-needed healing that we've been really, really missing out on as of late. So we'll definitely be trying her out soon. Really great backstory there from Seabass. The last of our new recruits is our Plague Doctor Isaac, and this backstory was written by Friendly Shep. 
Isaac had always had a fascination with animals, both alive and dead. He'd play with them and perform his own mini autopsies and generally explore their behavior of how their bodies worked. Those he lived with did not like the strange things Isaac did with animals. They began to distance themselves from him, making his connection to animals grow even stronger. The, um, they wouldn't run away from him, right? He began to perform larger and larger experiments until one day he thought, how does a human body work? His desired test subject, his own mother. He's an anesthetic he had handcrafted. He ambushed his mother while she was sleeping and dragged her off to his hiding place. He was intrigued. Who knew that you could learn so many things from a human corpse? Perhaps he should find out some more. Great, great backstory there. Really ties into, I mean, the whole Plague Doctors thing. Um, this thing, he's got a slightly more dark turn than the average Plague Doctor, but I, I really like it, and it fits in with his skills as well. Um, it's definitely great. Thank you for that friendly ship. So, this is our new crew, Linus, Maggie, and Isaac. We've got some good stuff going on here, honestly. Um, of course, we've still got a few people put away, healing up, and, and hopefully getting a little better. We still need to cure rabies here on Rune. I think definitely after our next adventure, we'll be uh, looking into that, because we are a little... We're a little um, low on funds right now, uh, but let's let's have a look at embarking into our next area here, and let's have a look who we're going to end up taking with us. So we've got plenty of stuff to do in the ruins here, but we have got the Warrens to go to, which we haven't been to yet. And honestly, slippery boots could be really, really good. I'm going to see if there's anything major that we'd really want. So this would be the Necromancer's Apprentice, and that's for Revenant only. So I believe that's Trail. Trail's a Revenant, isn't he? Yes, so that would be plus 100% damage at death's door. Wow, minus 20 stress. That's really good. But we can't we can't be challenging the Necromancer's Apprentice yet. We are not quite ready for that, unfortunately. Uh, but I think I think the Warrens is going to be nice for us to go and explore complete 100% uh, of room battles. I think we want to definitely take out Maggie with us. I think Maggie's going to be very very important. We'll keep her in the back line. I think we'll take Isaac as well. As a, a bit of extra poison and things like that. These guys, hopefully in the Warrens, should be fairly susceptible to poison. I can't remember if it's the Weald or the Warrens that has the Mushroom guys. I think it's the Weald, as you can see here. So the Warrens, we should be okay for uh, for setting up some poison. Um, and then, who else are we going to take here? Should we bring out Linus? Um, let's have a look. Where's he going to be attacking from? So yeah, let's, let's bring out Linus in our second spot here. Um, he should be pretty decent for... Uh, Getting maybe a little bit of uh, bleed and stun. Okay, that seems that seems really really good. But it does add one block to them. But I kind of like the idea of that, especially mixed with a plague doctor. Um, and then maybe we could take out Rune as our front runner here. Now he does have some pretty um, pretty terrible things on him here, and of course rabies really doesn't help with the minus ten accuracy. Yeah, uh, but. His disease is giving him plus 15% extra damage, so we might be able to do alright there. And he does have this healing ability here, which can be used from any of the spots. So let's uh, let's let's go with that. Let's let's bring out Rune. Uh, he's a little bit stressed, but I think I think he can cope. Um, he still doesn't have upgraded gear yet, so we'll go with him. Um, and I think we will leave everyone else behind. So Rune. Linus, Maggie, and Isaac will embark. So provisions, we're going to be a little bit light on provisions just because we don't have as much money as we normally do. But we should be okay here. So let's bring out 10 food. We'll bring out three shovels, two of those, two of those, two of those, one of those, two of those. And we'll bring out 12 torches. I think that's going to be good. Let's go and embark. So we actually have a diary entry from the first week here. Um... This one is by Nick, I believe, and this is um, from Aurora at Arbalist's perspective. This is the first entry into her diary after the first and second encounter. I've heard about eldritch monsters-like creatures and sinful humans that would kill for fun, but never I thought that something like this exists. It seemed, to ju it seemed just as dead as the normal skulls that you find in ruins, but how could the humans that arrived in this place even tame such creatures? I don't think I'll ever find out. Then a second entry in after the last battle. We managed to deal with them, but ever since that weird liquid was thrown at me, I felt a horrid shock as if my nerves were trying to tell me I was dying. And then her third entry when she returned to the hamlet. I still get the same shock from before. 
it's irritating, but it started to not uh, be as much as before when I first made contact. That's a really nice little bit of lore there for us with um, Aurora there, Arbalest. So let's go in. I'm a little worried here. Um, a little worried. But we do have two abilities to heal here. And I do believe his, his stress isn't too bad. It's exactly 20. Uh, so let's... Let's first of all make our way this way. We've actually not got that big of a, of a bit of combat here. So I think it doesn't really matter who we go with on this. So let's uh, put a holy water on that. Get some extra loot. And we actually got ourselves an abomination trinket. That's really nice, that. Ooh, that's really nice. I like that a lot. That's going to be very useful when we get our first abomination, which we already have a backstory ready for as well. So this guy, our trap maker... Very, very, very good at disarming traps. 120% chance. So, effectively, traps, as long as we can see them ahead of time with scouting, are never going to hit us, which is really a huge advantage because it, it basically means we're going to be able to get rid of stress on him very reliably. And when we're getting stressed like that, that's something I very much want. So, let's have a look at these guys' blight resists. So, the, these two in the front do have very high blight resist, but this guy's only 40%. In fact, though, I am going to go for a stun because he's only got 10% stun resist. I'd rather have him stunned than a 6% chance to blight. Um, now, we have been blighted already. Let's uh, let's see. Can we strike this guy from here? Unfortunately, we can't. Maybe we should have uh, tried to stun one up front. Either way, let's just go for a hit. Unfortunately, that minus accuracy on Rune there is, is showing us why it's uh, such a big pain. Um... Let's just go with a blunderbuss on the back guy. That is a lot of damage there. Thank you, Linus. That's beautiful. Yeah, we're really starting to take some damage here. So, we need to figure out how Maggie's abilities work. So they're a bit strange as compared to a lot of healing abilities. So, we can use this twice per battle. We can transform ourselves into cooking mode. Disable move if in mode cooking. Other heroes will heal for one point around for three rounds. We can do that. We can attack and mark a target. We can buff a target to take health, um, like increased healing received, and give them restoration, but then steal it onto ourselves. Or we can just straight up heal. Um, I think we'll go into mode cooking. I think we'll still get another move during this. Oh no, that, that counts as a move itself. Ooh, a crit on you there. Damn. Right. Let's go for a group heal right now and make sure, because Linus really is hurting right now. Um, let's try and stun you. Okay, good, good, good. And so, okay, this is interesting. So if we switch back to uh, combat mode, it will heal everyone for three, and it will blight all of the enemies. And we still get the same moves. So that's, that's actually really interesting. We can do a lot with that. Um, it does end restoration, but it heals everyone for three. Um, main course. So let's try this on you. So that heals him for two. Overfeeding. Okay, that's a new one. Uh, but we did get some meat on there. Let's have a look at what that does. Plus 5% maximum HP, minus one speed. That's actually really interesting. I like that a lot. Now I do wonder, can that stack? Can we get more of those? So that's bad. With, with our minus three speed from Ben out there, that's not great. Chance to refuse healing in combat is really bad. We need to get rid of that very quickly. Um, let's just go for another hit on you and finish you off. These two are still dealing blights. So I'd like to get rid of them pretty quickly, but it looks like we're just going to have to deal with it for now. Um, so what's his stun resist? He's got 50% stun resist right now. Um, looks like we've not really got much chance to do anything apart from buff here. So let's just buff Linus for extra damage and speed. Considering his speed is down, I think that's a good idea. And Maggie with the dodge there. I don't know how she's managing to dodge with that big old pot there. But she's 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 getting on. She's doing it. And honestly, the rabies are hurting us so bad. Minus 10 accuracy is insane. It's insane. So we'll do that. And this will steal restoration onto us. I don't know how the stealing restoration actually works. Oh, no, Linus. Come on. Um, let's buff him again. Um, keep healing Linus up. Right, there you go. Linus with the 40% extra damage. 
Beautiful. We're probably going to take some blight here. We maybe should have taken a few extra provisions to remove blight, but we do have three anti-venoms. That's not too bad. Um, buff target. Let's just do this. We can't really do anything else from this position anyways. And we can hit him in the back line. Almost got him. Now, he does have a 100% blight resist. Does this do damage? It does. We can probably kill him with this, yeah. Nice. Okay, and we even got more anti-venom, which is really nice. And as you can see, we only gained a little bit of stress on both uh, Maggie and Rune, but for the most part, we did pretty well there. I mean, considering Rune has just been out recently, he's doing well. We'll, we'll actually use our next holy water on this. We got such good stuff from it last time. Fortunately, that time was nowhere near as good, but it's worth checking those things. I'm pretty happy with this group so far. I think it's going really well. Um, ah, nice surprise on these guys. So... First thing we want to do is, if we can get a stun on you, move you back. Unfortunately, that moved him back. I was really hoping that wouldn't move him back, because then I'd be able to hit him. Let's just go for you. Insta-kill on that guy. We need to remove the stress dealer here. Can we? This is going to mark the target, give him extra received damage. I don't know about that. That's not great, is it? Uh, let's just go into cooking mode. Start that off. Get restoration on people going. Try and take you out. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually reach the back line. Is there anything we can do to hit that back line? Um, that's insane. That, that could be super useful uh, late, late on in combat. For now, let's actually just do this here and try this out. So that did give him a block, but that has bled him for a little while there. Okay, and a nice dodge there by Rune. Come on, dodge again. Ah, Rune. You fool. He didn't quite get it there. Uh, let's go for a shuffle. That's brilliant. Nice one. Come on, Rune. Come on, Rune. Yes. Crits. Not only is that going to be a bit of stress healing, but that is an instant kill on the stress dealer, which is lovely. Uh, let's go and debuff that guy. He's actually going to buff up our main cost healing skills. We get a little bit of stress from our drum guy. Um, let's just blunderbuss this back line. Unfortunately, we got it, but we didn't We didn't get moved. Luckily, she's got a lot of move resist there. Um, we can probably get some stun on this guy. Nice. And come on, back around to Rune. Um, let's, let's change over again. Heal everyone up and get Blight on everyone. There you go. He's taken out and a critical for some stress healing on people. This guy's going to be a little bit hard to deal with now because he does have a block. But that blight, wow. Okay, everyone's taking a little bit of stress here, but he has died, lovely. Okay, that went that went pretty nice, and we've got a kidney slice, sort of edible. Okay, and that's going to give us plus five death blow resist. So that must be something that the um, itinerant cook can find, like a special item, which is interesting. We'll open that up. We got ourselves jester only. That's really good. Four accuracy, four dodge. And we've got some more holy water back as well. Um, we need to go to this room and check if it's surfing. Uh, Thank God for the dodge there. Um, and we actually got just got holy water, which we can put straight into this pile of burns to purify it and get ourselves some sapphires. That's brilliant. Really nice to have those. Yeah, our first food check here. It'd be nice if she gave you some like like resistance sort of for food checks. I don't know. Made, made it so that if you if you he, uh, eat in combat, it means that you don't have to food check while walking around. I don't know if that's actually possible, but that'd be a really interesting little thing. Maybe it does already. Maybe it does already do that. But yeah, so far, at the minute, we really need to reduce stress on our Burgatier rune. He is getting a little high up there. He was already on a little bit of stress when we entered here. We are, unfortunately, going to have to go through a bit of rune combat here. But it was it was foreseen. So hopefully we don't get another food check here, because we can't afford another one. Which is a bit upsetting, really. Really? We, we found a lot of these so far. I don't want to touch anything if we don't have the, the required item. Okay. So we got a surprise here, which is lovely, considering we've got a stress dealer in the back. And if we can stun shuffle her, I will. Um, let's stun shuffle her. Please get brought into the front line. Yes. And then if Rune can slice. So we'll go into cooking mode here. Come on. Accuracy. No, Rune. You're terrible. I need to get rid of rabies on Rune. That's just awful. Thank God we got a stun for early. And let's go for... Actually, can we just do the same as last time and jiggle you around, bring you to the front? Unfortunately, he did resist both, which is a shame. And 
I, I, I don't actually know if this is the case, but I feel like stress dealers personally just target one person. Like, I, f I feel like they always go for the same one. Um, because I just get so much stress on one character, it's, it's insane. Uh, we do have a stress relief ability, but we can't use it in the position we're in, sadly. And of course you hit on that guy. We'll finish her off, make sure she can't deal any more stress. And then we should be in a good position here. Let's start blighting these guys, if we can. I don't think we can, actually. Just a bit of a shame. Do that on you. Nice bit of stun there. Please get a crit here. Please hit. Right. Um. Okay, so let's go with that. 10% healing received, and we get extra blight. So, oh wait, that doesn't... That doesn't take us out. Of, that continues turn. I like that. So now we can switch over, and that's going to increase our blight chance. And that's eight damage for one round. That's brilliant. Right. Another miss by Rune. You can't be serious, game. Oh, my God. So, unfortunately, um, we're really having a bad time with Rune here. The rabies that he has is, is effectively completely neutering his ability to do anything, which is a shame. Um... So just heal you up. It's effectively just nullifying his ability to do much, which is a real shame because... Okay, we got cadaver worms. Uh, that gives us plus one speed for the next battle. That's really nice. Right, made our way through. So we've got probably one more room battle left. One of these two, probably the first one. And we do have a hallway battle. Thank God we got the surprise again. Getting the surprise so early means we can basically nullify the stress dealer immediately. Really, really, really hope we pull off the stress there. Damn it, we didn't. And of course he hits then. So I, I really like switching into um, the healing mode straight away. Seems like the best option. Okay, nice dodge there, Maggie. Nice dodge. Maggie's dodge has been really high recently. I don't know what dodge she has, but it's been very effective. Let's actually have a look at that. Um, Maggie, what is your dodge? 10, that's pretty good. Only, only 19 max HP, though, so we're, we're in a bad position with her, whereas we've got, like, 35 here. Um, so, she didn't get any stun resist or anything there. She just got lucky. So, let's try and stun her again. We put her in position for Rune to take her out. But, unfortunately, she got her turn first. Nullified the stun effect. Unfortunate. Buff you up for a bit of extra healing. Then, let's... Honestly, let's just switch straight away. That's going to blight everyone for 8 damage for a round. He's dead. I maybe I maybe should have sliced this guy instead, actually, there. And used the blight to my advantage. Let's get rid of that bleed effect. Make sure you're gone. Oh, no. Linus. That was unfortunate. She should, have, she should have been dead there. But another dodge. We are getting very, very lucky right now with these dodges. Very, very lucky indeed. We've been getting good bleed resists as well for the most part. Um, let's just heal you up again. Bit of restoration there. Finish you off. Thank you, Linus. And we can probably get a sword swipe here and finish you off. Sadly, we are going to have to probably put our, our boy Rune through some stress relief after this, which is a shame because he's a good healer and we kind of need him. But at the same time, we, we also need the stress relief. Right, blood soak pages from a journal. I cannot recall why we ventured onto land, why we didn't, why did we leave when Mother Ocean provided us with all we need beneath her tender waves? I will now return home, back to her embrace. Indecipherable scratchings fill the remaining of the page. Wow. Okay, that's some sort of sea creature from the, uh, the curve by the looks of it that wrote that. Okay. I don't know how this works. By the way, you may be wondering why there's a curio hint on the objects. I, I installed a mod that adds all the curio hints onto the actual object itself so that I don't have to Google anything while we're in the middle of an episode. So I hope you guys are okay with that. So these guys have higher stun resist than they do blight, but I think we can benefit from a double stun here. They both resist it. Yeah, okay. And of course, they're both going to stack up blight on our, uh, our weakest member of the party. Let's hope we can get an insta-kill here. Linus, that's really not what we need right now, is it? Let's get some cooking going. Right, so that's okay, that's okay. Um, let's go for a full party heal. 
Going to buff everyone up for a bit of extra HP as well. Of course, he's uh, stunned right now, so he's not going to be super useful for us. Right, this better hit this time. Okay, good, it did. That was that was incredibly bad luck that both of those missed last time. Oh my god, we're getting stunned so much right now. Please hit. Thank you, thank you. These guys aren't going to leave bodies around either, so it's going to be easy to hit them. We're getting Blight lined up. We've got a lot of anti-venom, though, so I'm not too bothered about that. Right. Then, I think if we switch, this will just kill all of them, you know? Like, I think all of them are dead from that from that eight we just did there. Yeah, one dead, two dead, and three dead. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Right, and we actually got a swine tail here. So I'm just going to continue adventuring real quick, because I want to see what the swine tail does. That gives us maximum HP. Oh, no, I think that's disease resist that gave us there. Right. Do I risk taking this? Because this guy's got some really bad stuff. Oh, damn. I do not know. We don't have holy water. I think I think we leave it. It's it's too risky. It's too risky. We've got scouting here. Um, We can go and have a look what this curio is here and maybe get something extra out of this. And then we can get a little bit of extra stress relief on our guy here. And then we can even get another curio here. Okay. So there's our quest complete. Everyone did pretty well. Honestly, we didn't have any major catastrophes there. Um, I think taking Rune out for a second battle has made him a little bit... Um, that's really nice. It's made him a little bit uh, weaker in the mind department. He's, he's a little bit stressed out, but we can we can let him go off and maybe maybe drink. We've got ourselves another exorcist here. Right, so let's do some organization. So first of all, in the sanitarium, what was it? So... The thing is, Rune has two really bad things that need getting rid of. He's got a decent amount of stress, but he's also got rabies. I think rabies is pretty important to get rid of. Overfeeding's fine. I'm actually not too bothered by that. But burnout and um, superstitious is the really bad one. So let's, uh, let's take a little look here. Is there anything we need to do desperately? So I think if we go to treatment ward and go to the medical, we'll get rid of rabies it's cheap and he will de-stress while he's in there even if it's not too much um have a look so increase the number of medical ward cells so we could increase medical ward cells i don't know if that's the best idea yet um then i think we also want to go here and get rid of that even if it's 1500 we want to be treating our people as best we can and Aaron's got a little bit of stress relief. He will only, um, I'm guessing he'll only pray. Yeah, let's, let's let him pray. It's not, it's not a ton of stress to get rid of, but I'd rather have him de-stressed before our next battle. And let's see who we've got to take on for our next three. So, yes, we have three brilliant brilliant new people to join the cause. So, we have our Abomination, we have our Musketeer, and we have our Keeper. The Keeper is by far, by far my favourite modded character. Uh, right, let's have a look here. So, we actually have this now, Experienced Recruits. We definitely want to be getting that. Um, we want to be making sure that... Um, we can have leveled up characters. So one thing that people that I kind of asked on my Discord is, are we are we allowed? Say, say for example, I have a level zero keeper, and then next week a level one keeper comes in. Am I allowed to swap those out? Everyone said at level one. Well, from what I remember, I'll have to check again, and you guys will have to let me know in the comments. But from what what people mentioned is level ones and twos, we can swap out as we want. So if if they're if they're low level, if if we have a level zero and a level one comes in, or I have a level one and a level two comes in, we're allowed to swap those out. But past level two, we have to stick with who we've got. We have to stick with their quirks. We have to stick with everything we've got. So obviously these guys, I'd, I'd rather not trade any of them out because I've put money into them quite a bit of money in fact uh but we will see as we go and we'll start to upgrade roster size in fact we'll get a roster size upgrade now just so we're ready for the next three 
when they come in. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll actually go over the characters here and we'll go into their backstories in the next episode. So we've actually got a really interesting backstory coming in for our musketeer here uh, where she actually has like a sisterly bond with Aurora. I don't know if you guys remember that Aurora had like a friendship with the musketeer. So these two have a, a connection. Our abomination has a really good one. This guy's just great for like blight and stun. Uh, I, I tend not to use his transformation, but with his self-stress heal and all that sort of stuff, he's just, he's really useful. And then... Oh boy, how I love this class so much. Now, we do need to level her up to get some better skills on her, but she's all about dealing stress to herself in order to heal others and deal damage. So, as you can see, she does bleed damage there, but she and she gains extra bleed amount per 25 stress, and she has stress plus three on use. Then she has this one. This is her clearing um, horror and stress, where she'll activate a self-heal for five per round and minus off six stress and clear horror. But then she has this one, She's going to heal 5% um, of maximum HP on a target, so a teammate, uh, and plus 2 HP healed. And then, some of my favourite skills with her, um, this one is absolutely brilliant. This one here is really, really good. The other one that I want to look at is this one, I believe. Yes, heal party and guard allies. So this one's really interesting, actually. She, she puts us herself under um, a, a stress, like horror. So you have to use this basically next move. So she puts herself under horror um, and gains plus five stress for three rounds. So 15 stress total. She gains one block at a 60% chance and she also gains a little bit of healing. But the interesting th thing is she'll heal the full party and she'll guard every ally. Meaning every single enemy attack will come in towards her. Everyone will attack her. And if she has blocks and if she can get guards and she's really good. Another great combination is this phantom whale here. Buff a target for 66% damage reflection. So that that could be really, really strong. Really, really strong. So if you get that with someone that's got something like... Um, like... Repursed, it, it stacks so nicely. So we'll hopefully be using her quite a lot for, for as a healer. She's quite hard to manage, which can be really fun. Um, extra damage and crit while blighted. And she is going to be taking more stress against beasts and humans with less accuracy as well probably want to get rid of that pretty soon but, but yeah that's going to be an interesting one uh, i think she's the only one that we don't have a story for so far we might though i'm not 100 percent sure either way i hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and i hope you guys have been enjoying the series please make sure if you want to get involved to join the discord and i'll add you to the chat so you guys can start creating your own backstories as always thank you to all the people that have uh, contributed to this series and written backstories and stuff it's very much appreciated and yeah i will see you guys in the next one